I want African parents to adopt a different strategy when it comes to sending their young adults to Canada. Hello beautiful people, welcome back to the Canada Help channel. My name is Wolo. I am a regulated Canadian immigration consultant. I am based in New Brunswick, Canada. I used to be in Manitoba, but now in New Brunswick. And if you're new to this channel, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel. I talk about immigration and life in Canada and anything that can benefit anybody. And to my old subscribers, Asante, that is thank you in Swahili, Nagode, Mexi Boku, Dalo, um Eshe. Um, I was trying to learn the Ghanaian language for thank you, and I could not learn it completely before I started this video. So please forgive me. That's the Ghanaian um Tui, uh, yeah, Tui language for thank you. So please forgive me. In my next video, I would learn it and I will come and say thank you in Tui language to my <laughs> Ghanaian subscribers. Okay, so today's video is actually an advice to African parents who are sending young adults to come study in Canada. I want African parents to adopt a different strategy when it comes to sending their young adults to Canada. And that is because I have seen lots of young adults coming to Canada and not being able to achieve the purpose for which they were sent to come study in Canada. Some of them are not able to complete their education. Some of them are not able to gain their permanent residency status and they go back to their country. Well, some of these children or adults, young adults, they, most of them come from well-to-do homes. So um, this is actually directed to this group of people because sometimes they ignore certain aspects of their child's education and do not realize that it can actually impact their ability to get permanent residency after studies. So African parents, before you send your child to come study in Canada, especially if the child is 16 years old, or 15 years old. Do not rush that child to come study in Canada. Give that child a one-year gap. That one-year gap should be for work experience back in your home country. If your child is a Nigerian or a Ghanaian or a South African or wherever, Senegalese, Cameroonian, let that child have a one-year work experience, real-life work experience. I'm not talking about internships or vo voluntary experience. No, I'm talking about real-life work experience where salaries is paid into this child's account if the child has a one-year work experience that will count for work experience for the child before they come to canada to study and that would help them gain their permanent residency status on time immediately after they finish their studies they'll be able to use the one-year work experience from home to apply for permanent residence instead of trying to get a one-year work experience in canada I'm not saying a one-year work experience in Canada is bad, but in terms of getting their permanent residency status, the one-year work experience from home will now count for them and they will be able to create an express entry profile instead of waiting for one year before creating an express entry profile. So I don't know whether you understand what I'm trying to say. The, the whole idea of this video is how they can get their permanent residency as fast as possible without wasting time after studies. So that one-year work experience from home, like I said, it shouldn't be an internship or voluntary experience. It should be a real-life work experience, preferably in an in-demand occupation, right? Preferably in an in-demand occupation where they gain this experience and then they would use that experience, apply for their visas, come in, and then after studies, they apply for their permanent residency on time. Immediately, they finish their education. The second option is actually for them to learn French language during that one year. So they can combine learning French with a work experience or they can just learn French alone. But preferably let them combine learning French language with work experience. If they combine these two factors, that's learning French for one year plus work experience for one year before they come into Canada, it will also accelerate their getting their permanent residency as fast as possible so and the third option is actually sending them to you know coming for a two years program instead of a four years program so let's say your child wants to study mechanical engineering mechanical engineering is a four years program instead of sending your child to come and study mechanical engineering for four years at the university level you can send your child to study something 
um, that is more practical in the college level. And then once they get their permanent residency, they can go back to school to get the mechanical engineering degree. But with a one year work experience from their home country. So these are the strategies that you should be adopting when it comes to sending your young adults to come study in Canada. If they adopt these strategies, it will fast track everything for the child. They will not have delays in getting their permanent residency status immediately they finish their program. They will not, you know, be waiting to get a job first and then up working for one year first to get the Canadian experience class, you know, work experience first before they apply for permanent residency. Although, any job offer they get during studies, as long as it is a continuous job offer, it also counts towards work experience for express entry. So another strategy, which I'm also going to advise you as well, is while they are studying in school, they should also continue working full time if possible. It's not easy to combine schooling plus working. Um, there is no rule that stops a student from working outside Canada. So let's say you're studying in Canada, but you have a job offer that is based in the US, or you have a job offer that is based in Germany, or you have a job offer that is based in Nigeria. There is no rule that stops a student from working remotely. The only issue is, will the person be able to combine working full-time plus studying full-time? If the person has the capability of doing these two, then the person can continue or the young adults can continue doing this too, such that by the time they finish their program, they have work experience that they can use to create an express entry profile. If they don't do any of these things, let's say the child just comes or the young adult just comes to study without any work experience and living large and not working. I know most African parents who want the best for our children, we want them to be book smart which is not a good strategy. You know, if you want them to be book smart, it's fine. But when they are book smart and they come out, they cannot fit into the workplace because they don't have any work experience. It impacts their ability to get their permanent residency on time. So if they're able to combine both working and schooling at the same time and then finish, they'll be able to get their PR. But if they're not able to do this, you want them to finish and then get work experience there is a high chance of them not being able to get their permanent residency within the shortest possible time. And there's a high chance of them returning back without gaining their PR status. So this is the best advice I said I will come and share today on this channel. And I want to appreciate my followers for, you know, sustaining this channel. And please keep sharing my videos. Share this video to any African parents that is intended to send their child to come study in Canada. And please they should contact me for advice. <laughs> anyway, how do you like my hair? How do you like my nano braids? Yes, this is fantastic nano braids. And I, I think I will start selling hair. I don't know. <laughs> As if you guys see me on hair in this channel. But if you're interested in these nano braids, please uh, put uh, a comment in the comment section or send me an email. It's actually my sister that is selling the nano braids and I want to help her market the hair. So thank you so much for watching and see you in my next video. Bye-bye. Happy people, the true north of the land of freedom. Here we are, from far and wide we stand on God. Happy oh, people, the true north of the land of freedom. Oh, oh. Here we are, from far and wide we stand on God. Our home and a city blend